Hi everybody, welcome back. My name is Sanji and in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can use the Comsec app on your phone to buy and sell shares on the stock market. Now to clarify, this is not the Comsec Pocket app. This is the Comsec app, which is the mobile version of the desktop version of the full service version of Comsec, which Commonwealth Bank gives you access to. So once you've downloaded, let's fire it up. Now I've set mine up to log in with Face ID. So if you ever need to hack into my account, just make sure you have my face, then you'll be fine. Shouldn't have said that on video. Right, so the first screen you'll see will be either the portfolio or the watch screen, depending on how it's been set up as a default. Now in the early days, the Comsec app, I believe it defaulted to the watch screen, which will look like this. Quickly, I can show you, if you wanna change what it defaults to, just along the bottom, there is a section called more, click on that, then go up to settings, and you go to the default tab and you can change what appears there. So you can have the watch screen, the news feed, trade, all of that. I have set mine for portfolio, and what this basically says is whenever you fire up the Comsec app, what's the first page they'll show you. So quickly along the bottom, you've got portfolio, the watch list, your news feed, and markets. Now on the portfolio page, if you have shares, you'll obviously already see them here. I've got a bit of, I've got a few shares. And you'll also see this section called Estimated Settlements and CDIA and a bank, BSB and account number. Now this is important to keep track of. So your estimated settlement is when you've recently purchased some shares. So I've actually recently purchased some shares. The CDIA account is where the money for your shares will come in and out of. So as a quick example, I've recently purchased some shares. That's going to be taken out of my account on the 28th of September. And in my actual account, my CDIA account, I've made sure I've got about that amount of money in there. A little bit more, about a dollar more, just to cover that trade. And this is a key aspect of Comsec, which I'll talk about again later if you forget. But Comsec will do trades for you, even if you don't have money sitting in your trading account. That is a good thing and a catastrophically bad thing for some people, in that you can do a whole bunch of trades and be in all sorts of trouble if you don't have your money standing by ready for it. So if you do have shares, then you can click on this shares little arrow at the top and it'll show you what your portfolio looks like. Each row is each shareholding you have and along the columns you have all the key variables. Now I'm not gonna run through all of them. I'll just point out one of them, which is the purchase price. And this is a question I often get, the purchase price column on YouTube and in real life. And it's people saying, I just bought some shares, but the purchase price number is different from the price that I actually paid for the shares. And that's simply because Comsec has added in the cost of the brokerage and then divided that out by the amount of shares you've bought. So naturally what's gonna happen is the purchase price is gonna look, or it's actually gonna be stated a little bit more expensive because it wasn't purely the shares you bought, it was the shares you bought plus the brokerage you had to pay for, which Comsec has factored in when they indicate the purchase price. Key thing, I actually think it's quite holistic. I actually think that's very transparent of them. And it makes me wonder, possibly it was government regulation that forced them to do it. Otherwise, I mean, if I was Comsec, I wouldn't show people that, because then I'd just, you know, you don't want people to realize how much money they're losing in transaction fees, but anyway. So on the next tab, it is the watch list. And this is basically, kind of a watch list of shares that you keep an eye on. This is not any shares that you actually own. These are just shares that you've sort of set on your short list. You wanna keep an eye on these shares, whether they're going up and down and you wanna maybe execute a buy on them down the track. On the top right, if you wanna add anything, you can click on the three little dots on the top right, click add stocks and you can pick something. Let's say we wanna pick FMG, we can add FMG in. Bang, we've added it in and you can keep an eye on it there. Very handy, very useful. You can also have multiple watch lists. So I have on the top right, the um, well, that symbol there. You can get your normal watches or you can also have ETF watch lists. So I've custom created an ETF watch list um, and you can create a new watch list if you wanted to do that. So you can just call it a new watch list and then you can add things in there. And you can basically have three or four different watch lists, different categories. Because I think each watch list can only have up to 20 stocks on it. Now I'm gonna quickly jump through to the more tab and I'm gonna show you the get quote. So this is where you go if you want to basically quickly pull up the price on something. You don't have to add it to the watch list. You can just go to the more, get a quote and pick something out and say, you know, you wanna look at AFIC as a shareholding and you can get some information there. While we're here, let me quickly take you through this page 
where once you pull up an individual share, you get this kind of set of data that you can go through. So the first thing you usually see is depth. This is the market depth. This, is getting, this should give you a general idea of what people are trying to buy and sell this particular share at and the type of pricing that people are looking to do. Also, if you're looking at different types of ETFs, it will give you an idea of how liquid that ETF is because if you don't see a lot of buy orders in there, that's a good indication that that particular share or that particular ETF is not very liquid. So you have to be a bit careful about whether you want to go into there or not because you might not get a reasonable price going in or out of it. So then you can flick to the left, you can get market announcements. These are all the ASX listed or ASX regulation announcements that are there. And then you can click on news, but there's really anything in news. So you've got all your announcements. You can click through on any of them and it goes straight to the PDF for them. Uh, market depth we've talked about. Course of sales is handy if you want to see where, how are the sales going. And again, if you're looking at something that's quite illiquid, you can see what are the different variations in prices. And it's only a last 100 trades, so it may not be that useful if it's a highly traded stock like a AFIC or a BHP or whatever. Charts, intuitive. You know, the only thing I'm going to show you here is if you wanted to, you can click on the time frame and you can get longer time frames for these various things. You can't do a comparison with another stock as far as I know within here. All you can really do is add a few averages. You can add in events like dividends, when was dividends paid. You can compare to the S&P's performance, get a bit of an idea there if you wanted to. So you can say year to date, how has AFIC gone against the S&P? And you can zoom in a bit there. How's it gone? A little bit less bad. That's probably the best way to describe it. And at this point, I should also point out, you can put your phone horizontally and you can get slightly more detail in your data or your lines there. So in the recommendations tab, for AFIC, you won't see anything. And generally for listed investment companies and also ETFs, there's usually nothing in here. But if you are looking at a stock like a BHP or a coal, something that is being tracked by an investment bank, you'll get the reports here and you'll be able to access all the information there. So on the details page, the only couple of things I'll call out are you've got your 52 week highs and lows, PE ratio there. And also right at the bottom, you've got your dividend yield before tax, franking, and then tax adjusted dividend yield is also there. So that's, again, quite handy if you want to get a quick snapshot understanding. Now, jumping back along the tabs along the bottom, let's go to Newsfeed. Newsfeed is, it's sort of like a Facebook feed for all the shares you're trading. It gives you bits of information as you go along. Uh, and this is both for shares you're trading and shares that are in your watch list, I believe. If you want to filter it, you can just go to the top right, the little icon there, and you can say you only want you know, recommendation changes, ComSec video updates, or various things, just market announcements, say you wanted that, you can click that and you can just get that information. So you can see BHP here appears on this news feed, even though I can tell you now they're not on my portfolio. So it's a great way for me to keep an eye out on various announcements that are happening. Instead of having to check each stock, I can just click, click quickly go to the news feed, make sure they're in my watch list, and I can get a quick snapshot and say, oh yeah, this is what people have posted about their companies. It's the official news feed, by the way. It's not like Comsex news feed. Jumping across to markets, the markets tab. Again, this is just snapshot information. Market movers, advanced decliners, large cap, small cap, they're all there. Indices, if you want to keep an eye on it. Comsec updates, this is just Comsec news, not like specific company news. Uh, currencies, commodities, upcoming dividends, if you want to be a bit of a dividend trader, you can get all that information there. So the last thing I'll show you before we get into the actual buying and selling of shares is the alerts function of Comsec, which is quite handy. So you go to the more tab, bottom right, hit alerts, and then on the top right, you can hit plus button. And let's say you want to set up an alert for FMG. Uh, and what the alerts are is the ability to basically get an email or a push notification whenever one of these events that are on screen occurs. And you can set like thresholds for these. So let's say we want to set up an alert for when the price on FMG falls below a certain amount. So I can click price falls below. I can see the 52 week range is $8.13 up to $19.56. That's actually quite, quite a wide 52 week range. Anyway, let's say I want it to be alerting me whenever it goes below $8.13. Set the trigger price for that. I can either get an email or push notification. This is all free, by the way. This is all part of the Comsec full service brokerage account which everyone has to start with, then you can pay more to get all the other features. This is all set up, so then you hit save, and that's now sitting in my thing, 
whenever the FMG price goes below $8.13, I'll get an email and I'll get a push notification to my Comsec app and it'll appear like as a little alert, like an Instagram or a Facebook alert, it'll just appear there. That's quite handy if you want to keep an eye on a share, but you don't want to automatically take action on it. So this is different from having an automatic trading order set up where this will just give you an alert, but it won't actually do anything on your behalf. It won't buy or sell shares on your behalf. It will just tell you, hey, something's happened. The one I find most useful is actually when stocks go ex-dividend, because if it's a stock I really like, and sometimes I forget it's going to go ex-dividend, often you'll see a stock price will go ex-dividend and then it'll drop in value. It's usually a good time to then suddenly purchase a bit more of it if it's something you want to hang on to over time. So now let's get to the bit about actually buying shares. Now this bit, let me start with a massive disclaimer. Number one, if you want to play around with buying and selling shares on Comsec, you know, just for fun, just to test out the functionality of it, do not do it between 9 a.m. in the morning and 5 p.m. in the afternoon. And the reason for that is that's broadly when the markets are open. The markets are actually open between 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. But for the purpose of this, because I don't trust some of you, and I know some of you are going to push this to the limits, don't touch the buying and selling functions if you want to play around with it, or the trading functions, between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. The reason for this is, 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. weekdays. The reason for this is, if you screw up, if you accidentally hit buy or confirm to buy, or you ignore the confirmation page and you just hit buy without thinking twice about it, it will execute the trade. Comsec will execute the trade regardless of any money that you may have in your bank account. Regardless of if you have $500 or $0 in your bank account, it will execute a trade on your behalf. So what does this mean? This means you could be playing around with Comsec saying, well, I wonder what it would be like, you know, how do I set it up so that I can buy about $5,000 of shares and BHP, you know, some of that, I'll click this, bang, 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 whack, forget to check the confirmation page and accidentally just hit continue. Like that, the trade will go through. What ching it will happen, especially something like BHP, highly liquid, it will execute immediately. You will be surprised at how fast these trades will happen. If you don't actually have the money ready to go and you have no way of transferring the money in time, you're gonna be stuffed. So all I say is, sorry, there's no other way of putting it, you're gonna be stuffed. So all I say is, if you're gonna play around with the buying and selling functions, do it after 5 p.m. before 9 a.m. or just do it on the weekend. The other thing I will say is make sure you've cleared your orders backlog before you go. So to do that, you go to more and you go to orders and make sure there's nothing sitting in the outstanding section. I'll talk to you about that a little bit later, but make sure there's nothing in the outstanding section because if you've played around with this on the weekend and if you've left some orders in there outstanding, as soon as the market opens, those orders will get executed. That's fine if that's what your plan was, but if that's not your plan, again, you're gonna be stuffed. So make sure you give, keep the outstanding section clear once you've finished playing around with Comsec. Make sure you are you know, playing it safe, guys. Okay, now, you've decided to buy some shares. Great, welcome to the club. So what you do is you can either go to trade or you can go to get a quote, the two top ones in the more section. I would say go to get a quote first. Okay, let's say we wanna buy FMG. Go to FMG's page, spend some time in here. Make sure you understand the company you're about to buy, okay? So you've gone through, you've had a look at the depth, you've had a look at the recommendations, you've had a look at the 52-week highs and lows, PE ratios. You're up to speed. You know this is the company to buy. You're keen. Um, oh, here we go. This is actually the recommendations. Oh, this is actually not the company to buy. This is the company to sell according to all the recommendations. But regardless, let's say you're a contrarian and you want to buy. So you click buy very straightforward, then everything is pre-filled for you. So you can go to buy, FMG, it's already done. And because you've typed in FMG or it's been typed in for you, you get an idea of all the bids and offers on the market for the market depth. There's a few ways to buy shares. You can either say you wanna buy a quantity of shares for a certain price, or you can say you wanna buy a value of shares, like a certain dollar amount, for a certain price, and Comsec will calculate how many shares that translates into. Let's say, let's start with value. Let's start with value. Let's say you want to buy, say, $3,000 of shares and you, you want to pay around the bid price of 15.9. Now, if you're not sure what price to put in for your trade, there's, I guess, three or four prices you can essentially put in. The first price you can put in is the bid price. This is a 
reasonably conservative number. This is what people who are also on the market are saying. If I want to buy shares for FMG, this is broadly the price that I want to pay. It's like the highest bid price. It's the highest price that people are willing to pay that's already being set in the market. The last price, which is the top right, top price, 15.91, is a price that has recently happened. It's the transaction price that has recently occurred where two people have bought and sold shares at. The offer price, 15.92, is like the cheapest price that other people have indicated they're willing to sell the stock at. It's probably the way I've put it. So depending on, you know, order of desperateness to buy these shares, that's how you would pick them. You know, pick 15.9 as your lowest, 15.91 as kind of your mid one. And if you really want to execute a trade, 15.92 is quite a reasonable price to put in, especially if you refresh it. And it's still saying that because that's what people have actually said I'm willing to trade at. Or of course you can just choose a price, but there are certain limitations that ComSec will accept. Like I, I think it can't be a certain deviation away from the last price, but you know, I'll let you figure that out through your own trial and error. Now you can already see when we put in the limit price of 15.9, it already pre-filled how many units I need, okay? Now the other thing is good till expiry, good for day. Good till expiry is when you say, I wanna put this order through and I want it to stay in the ComSec system until it's either executed, like I can find someone, until ComSec can find someone who can buy the shares on behalf of me, or until the end of the day, which is around 4 p.m., when the markets will close and you won't have to worry about it. Okay, so that's that's all right. Now, now we can click review. We won't be executing an order, so it's the weekend for me as well, so I'm just gonna click, click review and it won't actually execute the order. You get a confirmation page. This is important. Make sure you pay attention to what's on this page because this is your last chance to get it right. What are we actually doing? We're buying, we're buying FMG, 188 shares of 15.9, expiry today which I think will actually be Monday because I'm recording this video on a Sunday. So if this goes through, what this is actually saying is it will expire at the end of Monday. And this, this will give me a rundown of what I'm paying. So order value, so $2,989.20 is the amount of shares that I'm actually buying. That's the dollar value of shares that I'm buying. And I'm buying 188 shares at a price of 15.9. But when you add in the brokerage of $19.95, I'm actually going to be spending out of my account $3,000, $3,009, good grief, $3,009.15. Now I'm going to click submit. Now it is the weekend for me. So I know this trade is not going through. Is it the weekend for you or is it after 5 p.m. for you? Because if it's not after 5 p.m. or if it's not the weekend, if you click submit, this will go into the system and it'll potentially execute. I said potentially depending on what price you put in you may not find someone who's willing to buy it at the, the price you said, sorry, willing to sell their prices at the price you said, but just, again, make sure, as soon as you hit submit, this thing is gonna go in and it's gonna execute. So, submit. Dun dun, it's in, okay. Now it says, you know, all your various bits of information and you can either place another order or you can click done. Now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna click done and I'm gonna show you where you go if you want to manage this order. So now that I've put this order in, let's say for whatever reason I've decided I don't want to do the order, I can go to orders, which is here, and then I can see outstanding. So there's the FMG. Now you can click on this to get a bit more information, so it's sitting there. And if you wanted to amend the order, you can do it here, or you can click cancel. Your order will be canceled. And that won't cost you anything, okay? Now, if you've put that order through and it's, if it's been executed, you usually get an email from it. You don't actually get any push alerts. You usually just get emails from ComSec. But if you want to keep an eye, eye on it, you can go to the order section. You go to executed and you'll see basically if it's left the outstanding section, it's gone into executed, you'll know that order has actually occurred. So if you do have some shares that have traded successfully, it will appear here in the estimated settlement section, okay, where it's got the due date and how much you're you're going to be debited or how much you're going to be credited. So if you're selling shares, you'll see something in the CR column. Uh, if you're buying shares, you'll see something in the DR column. The CDIA account is the account where you need to make sure the money is sitting if you're buying or if that's where the money is going to be deposited if you're selling, okay? This is quite important. So you can see there, I've got a trade that will need to go through 
I've got a trade that will be settled on the 20th of September. And I basically need to make sure that the account balance in the CDIA account, the little section below, is matching that and that I'm okay in terms of my money. Otherwise, I'll get fined and then, you know, it just gets progressively worse if you don't have enough money sitting in there. Something I really want to reiterate is at the end of playing around, make sure you go to the More tab, you go to Orders, and you don't have anything sitting in the Outstanding section, okay? See how it says you currently have no outstanding orders? That's a good thing. That's what I want. Because I don't want anything sitting in the backlog so that I forget about it, I wake up tomorrow, and then suddenly before I know it, I've traded all these shares. Make sure this section, the outstanding section, is clean and cleared. If it isn't, click on something and then click cancel and get it out of there, okay? Because if you don't clear this, regardless of how ridiculous you think the price is, that trade may go through and you'll be liable for that, okay? So make sure this section is cleared whenever you leave the ComSec app. Unless you actually have something that you have planned in there, make sure it's cleared. Well, that's it for today, guys. Hopefully you guys found that useful on how to trade using the ComSec app. Remember, this is not the ComSec Pocket app. This is the ComSec app, which is a companion to the full service desktop version of the ComSec uh, online brokerage platform that you can use. Questions, anything as always, comment below, or you can call me on my number, my 03 number that I'll leave in the description below. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.